for some fun and I hope you are too. Today's show is guaranteed not only to be fun but to be educational. The two best things put together and there's nobody better at doing that than our guest today, Bridget Johnson aka DJ BJ. To her fans, most of whom are probably five-year-olds, but I am a fan too and I want to welcome you to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. So, children's book author, educator, art artist, business owner, um, she has spent her career um, learning how to engage our most vulnerable students, our most precious babies, those that are early childhood age with some of the zaniest lesson plans, lesson topics, <laughs> rapping. I almost wanted to um, engage you in a rap battle, but <laughs> considering that's not my specialty, I said, no, I better not do that. But she's been recognized um, for her efforts at making a difference and her achievement at doing so with student academic success. She was a Hero of Education Award from Class at Credit Union. She's been featured in Today's Woman magazine. She won the Video of the Year for Five Senses, Easy Way Golden Carpet Awards, and an Inventors Award from Inventors of Kentucky. She is the business owner and operator of Creatively Invented. And she, as I said, is a spunky rapper and educator. And if you've ever met her, you are just going to be in for a treat today as she teaches us more about being a superpreneur. Now, this is a copy of her latest book that we're going to be talking about today, Superpreneur. And if you look at the cover, uh, you'll know why this may be such an important book for her. But before we do anything else, um, why books? Why did you get into authoring books? Well, when I first started with uh, JCPS, I was a substitute. And so uh, I did that for eight years. So I got to go around to different schools and I saw that children, the behaviors were because they were not fully engaged with what was going on. So I used to take songs and jingle off of them and, you know, put them together, sing in a shower, bring it back to the school. And the kids liked it. And so what I did, I went in the studio and recorded those songs. And so then I created a book to go with each one of them. So I have related materials to go with it. So, and then I found that uh, using hip hop incorporating it with the books and the music, it was fully engaging the children. And I had some extreme behaviors and uh, it, I found something that worked. <laughs> well, anytime you say hip hop and young children, cause we all know they can learn through music. If they can't learn anything else, we see them come in the classroom all yes. the time. They know the words to every song, and if yes. you can put it in a way that is engaging for some, they have to learn. So, superpreneurs, I read it. I couldn't believe how much you jammed in <laughs> from cover to cover. Um, you made it good for everybody, but it was interesting because not only was there a glossary of terms mm -hmm. that you outlined, but you had scripture in it, yeah. you had coronavirus <laughs> in it, you had a little bit of everything. So, yeah. what was your inspiration um, for the book? That the inspiration for that particular book was my two grandchildren, and uh, I'm a part of a group called Master Builders Academy at my church. I go to Christ Temple Christian Life Center, and uh, we have a self development group, and we we've been doing it for about six years now, and so just learning about finances, about you know being debt free, and just learning everything I knew. I you know I looked at my grandkids. I said you know they have a chance not to make the same mistakes that I did. You know, not acquiring student loan debt, not, you know, saving the right way, investing the right way. And so I made a, a decision that I was going to teach them, but I wanted to do it in a fun, creative way, in a way that they understood. So what I did, uh, they have a lemonade stand, and so that's their business. And through their business, through them learning about money and selling their lemonade, we decided to write a book about it. And so after we wrote a book about it, then we came up with the rap, you know, uh, 
to incorporate the children, reinforcing what they learned in the book about assets and liabilities and, you know, stocks and different things like that. So I made a decision that I was going to start teaching them early and uh, they're catching on, uh, you know, and of course, I've, you've probably seen some of their videos, <laughs> you know, they said we're going to make a hundred monies, you know, and uh, <laughs> so, you know, just teaching them early so they don't make the same mistakes and just teaching them how, you know, to uh, save money, you know, because mm -hmm. in the book, their friend Lavina wants to know why they want to save their money, right. you know. Why won't uh, they spend it? Right. right. Why don't you take why that $5 buy? and buy some candy and some toys with this? So right. they're explaining to their friend, you know, that they want to make some money. And so they're explaining to their friend that they have to make a loan because they really don't have the money. So they have to borrow the money to get the lemons and the sugar from their mother. And then, you know, it's just so many other things that they, you know, are teaching their friend in the book about, you know, their journey with this lemonade stand. So, right. you know, that's how it all started with them and uh, it's taken off. Uh, we have a, a little partnership with Park Credit Union. They're gonna go in and do a video out, uh, putting their money in and, you know, talking to kids about uh, some of the terms in the book, the glossary, that they have, in a way that they understand it for preschool, mm -hmm. you know, so. Well, this um, is one of those, um, I call it play and pause text, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a video or whether it's a book. What I love about the book is it gives you an opportunity to stop along the way and make sure you can reinforce some of the terms because yes. you have everything in here. And that's what's so wonderful that we're not dumbing down no. money concept. You know, um, you talk about asset and capital and what it means to gross profit and investment. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I love the fact that, you know, even the, the sisters in here had to go, the, the superpower girls had to go and um, uh, get their table. Yes. And they nobody just gave them a table. You know, it would have been easy for you to write in, well, Mama let me buy the mm -hmm. table. You was like, no, she had to buy the table. Yes. So she had to use her money mm -hmm. to invest back in. So that was one of the things I think I found most interesting about it, how you were able to bring all of that yes. together. Yes. So how has um, how have Kamani and Dior um, internalized this? Because I assume you've used it with them the most. So Yes. Um. Well, we've been to several vendors events and, you know, they're out there pushing their book. They're out there, you know, talk, telling the people, you know, that they buy assets. We save up. We have a lot of money when we grow up, you know. Uh, See, she threw in that rap <laughs> right there. Y'all may not have caught that. I caught that. <laughs> you know, take a little change, put it in your pocket, put it in a jar and make sure you lock it. Save it real big and you might see the value of financial literacy. Save to buy land, save to buy stocks then start a business and you will rock. So they go out and rap. <laughs> they wrapped up in their shins at the, you know, at yes. the uh, black pop-up mall. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the lady from B96.5, uh, they did a, they rap with her. So they're out there rapping and telling the people through song, you know, how they're going to do this. And so, you know, they're, they're opening a savings account, like I said, a Park Credit Union. And they're going to, you know, go, another book is going to be Beyond the Lemonade Stand. So whatever career that they want to go into, that's the next book is going to be about that. And we'll probably dive into different careers or whatever, but uh, they are actually a voice. They're out there telling people, when we do the lemonade set in front of the house, they're, they're out there in the yard telling people to come <laughs> over, you know, they waving them down. You know, we are the superpreneurs and, right. you know, and the name, the lemonade is uh, Lemonade Divas. And I have been selling it since uh, we've done the, the outreach vendor events up at uh, Nation's uh, in, it's just been phenomenal. People just calling me, can I have 30? Can I have 20? You know, wow. so it's just been going on and on and on. And wow. so uh, I am looking into some partnerships with uh, Sharon Lecter. You know, she wrote Rich, well, mm -hmm. she was in the part uh, partaking of helping write Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And so we're looking at a financial literacy program for children. Excellent. Uh, because if we get them young, we're going to save them a whole lot of heartache from debt unnecessary debt <laughs> for the rest of yes. their lives yes. okay you guys it's called <laughs> superpreneurs and we come back from the break we're going to get into a couple more of her titles we are with the one and only dj bj bridget johnson don't go away
are back with DJ BJ and her wonderful book called Superpreneurs, teaching kids about financial literacy, how they can be their own boss. And one of the things we talked about is that she's included everything in the book. One of my favorite passages in the book, though, happens to be near the end when um, I think it's Lavinia. Yes. The, uh, their friend, their cousin, who um, actually learns a lesson and says that her mother told her that it is more blessed to give than receive. Mm -hmm. So I love a book that also has some scripture in it, has some church in it, has some meaning in it. And I think that's one of the things you were able to get across in the book as well. Why is, um, why do you think, and we talked about, you know, the need for our children to be better mm -hmm. off than we were mm -hmm. and introducing them. Do you think it's ever too early to start talking about money? No, I don't think so, because in early childhood, I've heard a lot of things <laughs> from children that wasn't conducive to, you know, so they learn, you know, maybe the wrong things, but I think they're not, it's not too early for them to learn about financial literacy, because sometimes they pick up the wrong things, mm -hmm. and they learn that, and so, you know, we're trying to change that, you know, through books, through, through music, through by whatever means it is, you know, because mm -hmm. the child cannot help the environment that they're in so but I've seen them learn a lot of things that they shouldn't be learning but you know so I say well if they can learn that I know they can learn this so <laughs> right, right. I slide it in there too <laughs> I know that um, I remember being in the in the classroom in the school and we'd have a book fair and yes. kids would come with you know hundred dollar bills or fifty dollar yes. bills and yes. Uh, you know, would say I want this book and put the fifty down and walk away. Yes. They would, you know, just never, <laughs> given the expectation, bring some back. You're yes. supposed to bring change back. Right. So, learning about money as soon as possible. Okay, so finally, how do you hope? What What would be your vision? How do you hope this book will be used? I hope that it will go into every preschool in Jefferson County and beyond that, uh, because it's an important uh, subject. And, you know, with the pandemic and everything that's happened, a lot of people weren't prepared, even as adults, mm -hmm. saving money. They didn't have an emergency fund. They didn't have anything to sustain them. So I think if we plant seeds early, then we're going to produce a harvest of children that understand, you know, I'm not supposed to spend every dime I get, you know. Uh, you know, there's a way for me to save. And we even talked about in the book with the money jars, you know, there's a way to save. And then there's a time, when I think somebody, uh, Kamani or Dior had a birthday. And they were talking about they were going to spend some money on their birthday. But then somebody said, not too much, mm -hmm. you <laughs> yeah. know, and we're not going to spend all of it now, you know. So uh, I think, you know, in every preschool, it needs to be a little financial literacy program. Even if it's after school, uh, I think that they need to learn early. And I think, like I said, it's going to produce them having their own businesses. You know, they understand about business now, you know, in a kid way mm -hmm. and understand about investing. Their grandmother is now investing in real estate. So, you know, mm -hmm. granny got a house, you know, so they think <laughs> I'm going to live in. I'm like, no, I'm going to, you know, rent it out. But, right. you know, they're learning now, you know understanding that you know you take your money and you invest it into something and you get a return on your investment That's opposed right. to just spending 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 and never have anything so That's right and uh, one of the things that um you know i am sure that every parent will agree with is it's never too early i think no. you're right and no. i think that everyone wishes they had been taught sooner and i know that they wish that for their own children you see those surveys come out every now and then about what the school should be teaching yes well the financial literacy is always there but we would challenge parents to uh teach their own children if the schools aren't doing it teach it for yourself yes you really can and you know student loan debt loan debt is a subject all by itself you know i would say even at an early age start saving you know money for college for your students so they won't have to get a student loan debt that's or right. the parent plus loans and you know that's going to be a book of mine do not do it <laughs> do, not do not do, do it, it. pay for it one right. class at a time <laughs> now let's talk about one of my next favorite books that you've authored uh, i think this was your first book no the the use your manners okay i mean uh, uh, i know five my five senses, senses. Yes. okay so yes. i know my five senses yes um um, was your first book. And what I loved about this book mm -hmm. is that you even had a um, workbook type yes. uh, activities at yes. the back mm -hmm. and matching up senses. Yes. So this is truly a pre-K experience. We yes. know that in pre-K you learn about your senses. Yes. And the other part of that, if you all can see this, and I'm holding it up, I hope you can, um, the, the illustration 
of DJ BJ on here, how it matches up with her is on point. So tell me a little bit about um, the illustrations in your book because you do self-publish. Yes. My, so who uh, do you use? My illustrator, uh, I met with him. I met him through another person and we went out to eat and uh, you know, I was telling him about my book. I was excited. I was like, you know, I've been in the classroom jingling off this song and the teachers kept asking when I was going to make a, you know, a CD and the kids love it. They called me the five senses lady. I would take my fake keyboard and go to every room and act like I was playing, you know, and I would be <laughs> rapping about the five senses and they loved it. And so uh, we were sitting down at the table eating. I said, I want a, a rapper, you know, with the five senses chain. You know, I want it around his neck. And, you know, <laughs> he was like, while I was there, he drew me, my whole outfit. He drew my hair. I said, you know, he could have brought it down a little bit. <laughs> he drew my purse, my jogging suit, my shoes, everything. He said, you're going to be the rapper. So, Excellent, <laughs> excellent. And so, um, again, the importance of teaching our children their body parts and how God created them. So another wonderful title. And let me ask you this. Um, when you talk about the five senses, and especially at the back, like I said, where there are the workbook pages, when's it too early to start teaching kids about that? It's never too early because your five senses you, is in the environment. You know, that's how they learn about the environment. You know, they have to touch, feel, see, hear. And it's just so many ways you can teach it. Uh, you know, going to the grocery store, in the house, you know, there's, it's never uh, too early to teach the five senses. I mean, they can be a toddler. You know, they can feel, they can touch, mm -hmm. they can hear. And that's been a popular book with me even going back in uh, Jefferson County and doing like literacy nights. You know, I would do a whole lesson. And even at the library, I would, you know, have like the mat giant mats. And so we would, uh, we would talk about the senses, not only just the senses, but like, What's inside the nose? You know, what's mm -hmm. inside the ear? You know, what's inside the hand? And what makes us touch? So we did those type of things, and it really extended the lesson by just not just saying five senses, but extending it to something that the kids understand that, you know, I got 20,000 taste buds on my tongue. I just don't have a tongue. You know, it's right. more to my tongue than this. You know, right. and we talked about people, you know, not having their senses, like people that are blind, you know, people that are deaf and different things like that. So it's been a lesson that I didn't think that would go as far as it has. I've taught it in libraries, different libraries. I have a contract with them. And uh, like I said, I've been doing literacy nights and been doing the five senses. And, you know, after we get done, we all get a microphone, you know, and we wrap, you know, the five senses. But they love learning about it because there's so many ways you can go with it, you know. And, you know, not only can I touch, hear, feel, see, I can, you know, I can put whatever I can hear with. I make and put it, put it in what, what I taste. You know, it's just yeah. different things. So they all go, you know, cross. And so the kids are learning that, you know. And like I said, that's been a very popular book with the children and extending the lesson out and even adding a little STEM in there with it. So uh, Excellent. Excellent. Like we that. talked about that a few weeks ago on our show with Ricky Mason and Brainstem University mm -hmm. and the importance of science introduction or as early as possible. Yes. So this is a great tool in doing that. All right, so we talked about superpreneurs. We've talked about my five senses. When we come back, we're going to talk about manners and we're going to talk about why that book is extremely important and how it can be used today. So don't go away. Stay here. We're with DJ BJ. What does a revolution look like? Isn't it a difference in how we see things? Recognition that the old ways are not enough. That what has been done in education is not enough. That's why we sounded the call and the nation's top educators are answering. Together, we're creating a new program aimed at excellence in education. This is a revolution. This is Simmons Nation. We are back with Bridget Johnson, a.k.a. DJ BJ, and we're talking about one of my favorite books out of her collection, and that is Use Your Manners. And in the corner on the cover, it says, Introducing Mighty Manners and etiquette which i think is so cute <laughs> etiquette get it etiquette <laughs> etiquette and so she's the superhero in the pink on the on the cover and so talk to me a little bit about um where have our manners gone how come we aren't using manners anymore 
Well, I believe I can't really blame it on any set type of things. I can, but I won't because sometimes a parent has been taught a certain way and so then they teach their children. Mm -hmm. So if a parent hadn't been taught it, then they can't teach their children. So I can't say, well, parents are not teaching it. Maybe their parents didn't teach it to them. them. So, but I seen that manners was was at an all time low. I mean, you hand the kids something, they just snatch it from them. They wouldn't even say thank you, you know, just like, well, you owe it to me, you know. Or they would just sit in the chair all slumped up, you know, and then eat and then food falling everywhere, not wiping their mouth off. And I was like, do y'all eat like that when y'all go out? They said, yeah. I said, well, we're going to talk about manners in here. So I came up with the idea of Mighty Manners. I said that we had a superhero because the children love superheroes. I don't care who it is. And so I thought Mighty Manners and I, I thought about putting an M on his chest, you know, an M and M. And mm -hmm. so, you know, Mighty Manners is a superhero of all good deeds. And he says, I am Mighty Manners, and I'm here to say, I don't like bad manners, and I'm on my way. So <laughs> wherever there's disrespectfulness, he's going to the scene. And when he goes to the scene, he's correcting the wrong disrespectfulness and mm -hmm. teaching the kids the right disrespectfulness. And so... Uh, this I, also does something with bullying. Yes, bullying <laughs> is in there too. Uh, uh, the little boy on the bus stop, and uh, there's another guy coming up, and he's telling him that you know he has to move out of the way. And so uh, the kids are telling him, he said, I'm not budging, you know. And so anyway, the kids are saying, you know, we glad uh -oh. you stood up for us, you know. And so anyway, the bully gets mad and he uh, wants to fight. And so he was like, oh, he said, maybe I shouldn't have spoke up, you know. I should have <laughs> just kept quiet, you know. And so he said, help. And then Mighty Manor goes, Mighty Manners comes to the scene. And uh, he talks to, you know, the bully about, you know, he said, I'm just bullying because I want to be popular. And, you know, he said, you can be popular without, without doing bullying. that, yeah. you know. And so he was saying, you know, he said the right thing to do is apologize, you know, and make things right. And so the next scene is him getting on the bus and he's being friends with everybody and being respectful. <laughs> and so, you know, Mighty Manners is showing them the right way to do things. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there's another character in the book, Ed Etiquette. Etiquette. Where she has her own book and... Uh, she just introduced in the back. She's teaching the children how to, <laughs> yeah. and her name is Angel Best Square, so it's multicultural. <laughs> so Angel Best Square is etiquette, and she's teaching the children, you know, how to eat and how to, you know, sit at the table and how to not to have your elbows on the table. Mm -hmm. And there's a video that goes with that, too, mm -hmm. uh, with the kids. Uh, the parents are showing the kids how they're supposed to eat at the table. And, and when somebody gives you something, I say thank you. When I say it so politely, they will really, really like me. I use my manners to show respect. I use my manners to show respect. I use my manners to show respect when I use my manners. So. Oh, see, she raps, she sings, she writes, she talks, she sells lemonade, she raises grandchildren. She's just doing it all. I know at the back of the book, um, that was, I mm -hmm. use my manners. So yes. now, with all of your books, I noticed that they all had CDs with them. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and so they have the songs that are in the book that go along with them. Yes, they have. The, the song is in the book. It really could be a song book. It's a, the song is in the back of the book where the parent, after they read the story, can reinforce singing the song to mm -hmm. help the kids remember it. And they could uh, also, there's a journal to go with that. It's a coloring book. So I have related materials to go with it. And I am expecting a literacy, I mean, a... Uh, uh, manners program in schools and I talked to one partnership uh, at the African Heritage Center where we want to get manners you know going too because it's such people don't talk about it anymore and I've even right. heard some parents say you know my child don't have to say yes ma'am no ma'am you know whatever yeah. and we see that our society is getting more disrespectful more disrespectful and in the next book uh, with uh, is use your manners in the community we even are talking about how you're supposed to respect elderly people, you know, and mm -hmm. it's some kids on the bus and they're laughing, you know, because the, o the older people are getting on the bus and the lady said, my feet hurt. And the kids like, I ain't giving up my seat. And they're like, I ain't giving up my seat either. You know, they're laughing and joking on them. And then Mighty Manners comes to the scene and he tells them, you know, you respect the elderly. You give up your seat and let them sit down. You and have so. done such good work because listen, <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember, um, and I want to encourage the parents that are watching this, I know that, you know, to this day, uh, when I clean up, I will find myself singing, clean up, clean up, <laughs> you know, right from the Bar Barney song. And I just think that if I had had access 
to books like this when my children were going up with rap or with, you know, songs attached to it, I would have loved to have used that. Okay, so then the big question becomes, how do we get your books? My books are on Amazon.com. They're on Googlebooks.com. Uh, they're on my website, creativelyinvented.com. And uh, I also sell them from my home. Excellent. So, so if we want to get in touch with you, how would we do that? You can contact me at bit.ly forward slash tutoring the profits. That is another business I'm starting to help teachers that are stressed, overwhelmed, and burnt out mm. how to start their own profitable tutoring business. Excellent. Using Excellent. edutainment. Using edutainment. Edutainment. There is nothing <laughs> mm -hmm. more exciting to me than being able to see great teaching in action. Um, teachers who have a passion for it, but also have the skills to put it into action. And today, I am blessed because we have both of those in Bridget Johnson, who joined us today to share her books, to offer them to you. We want to reach out. We want to support her. She is right here in the Louisville community doing great things. And we just want to encourage her and you to keep doing what matters most in the lives of our babies. We need it now more than ever. I am so thankful for you being with Thank us today. And as always, we'll be back here next week, same time, same place. As always, thank you, and to God be the glory. Mm -hmm.